This lesson will show how to graph the cosecant function over the closed interval from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. To better understand the graph of the cosecant function, since cosecant x is equal to the reciprocal of sine x, or 1 divided by sine x, wherever the sine function is equal to 0, the cosecant function is undefined, and the cosecant function will have a vertical asymptote wherever the sine function is equal to 0. And also, where the sine function value is equal to 1, so is the cosecant function value, since 1 is a reciprocal of 1. And wherever the sine function value is equal to negative 1, so is the cosecant function value, again, because negative 1 is a reciprocal of negative 1. Let's take a look at the graph using Desmos.com. As I increase a from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi, we will see the graph of the cosecant function. A couple of things you might notice right away about the cosecant function is that the period is 2 pi radians, the same as the sine function. However, the cosecant function does not have an amplitude because the graph does increase indefinitely as well as decrease indefinitely, or it goes up forever and down forever. And now to better understand this graph, let's go ahead and clear this graph and graph the sine function. So here we have the graph of the sine function dashed and in orange. And again, where the sine function is equal to zero, the cosecant function will have a vertical asymptote, which means the cosecant function will have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two pi, x equals negative pi, x equals zero, x equals pi, and x equals two pi. Let's go ahead and graph these vertical asymptotes. And now from here, let's identify where the sine function is equal to one, which would be the high points of the graph. And wherever the sine function is equal to one, so is the cosecant function. And therefore, these two points will be on the graph of the cosecant function. Similarly, where the sine function is equal to negative one, the cosecant function is also negative one, which would be at the low points here and here. So now that we have the vertical asymptotes, and these four points on the graph of the cosecant function, we can now make a very nice graph of the cosecant function by having the graph pass through these four points and approach the vertical asymptotes. Let's go ahead and do that. And here we see the relationship between the graph of the cosecant function and the sine function. Notice where the sine function is concave down, the cosecant function is concave up, and where the sine function is concave up, the cosecant function is concave down. Now if we did want to find some more points on the graph of the cosecant function, we can use the fact that we know that the sine function values and the cosecant function values are reciprocals of one another. So for example, we know at x equals pi over six, the sine function value is equal to one half, and since the reciprocal of one half is two over one or two, the cosecant function value of pi over six is equal to positive two, Looking at the graph, here is the point on the sine function, and here's a related point on the graph of the cosecant function. Similarly, at x equals five pi divided by six, the sine function value is one half, and therefore the cosecant function value is equal to positive two, which would give us this point on the graph of the sine function, and this point on the graph of the cosecant function. So again, we can find additional points on the graph of the cosecant function based upon our knowledge of the sine function. I hope you found this helpful.